Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and to another monthly installation of Arch. In this video we're going to install Arch Linux from scratch with the Refine Bootloader, the Budgie Desktop Environment and ZRAM. So without further ado, let's get started. So here we go guys, this is the Arch ISO for February 2022. Today we are going to install Arch Linux as usual, as we do every once a month. We're going to install it this time with the Refine Bootloader, which is a bootloader for UFI systems. And we are going to install it also with the Budgie desktop environment, which as you probably know, is the desktop environment of the Solus distribution. And also you find the Budgie desktop environment also on Ubuntu Budgie. So let's get started here. The first thing we need to do is to change, if you need to change it, is to change your keyboard layout. As you know, the root ISO here, the Arch ISO boots always with a US keyboard. So if you have a US keyboard, you are set to go. If not, you'll have to load your keyboard, which you can find with locale, CTL, and then list dash keymaps. This will give you a list of keyboards in the system that you can choose from. Now, mine is actually right there, DE underscore CH. So I'm going to quit out and load the keys in the system by typing in the load keys and then the string. So DE underscore CH dash Latin one. Of course, replace this with your string. And this is now done. So next is to check if we have an IP. So let's type in IP space dash CA, which is going to show us the IPs in colors, which is a little easier to read. You can see that I have an IP ending with 109. Now your IP might be different, of course, but it shows us that we have an IP in our machine. Now this is because I have an Ethernet connection. You can see that my interface number two is ENP 0 S3. That's an Ethernet interface. If you have Wi-Fi, you can use the IWD utility, which you can access with IWCTL and then hit enter. Now, usually here, you would probably type in something like station and then the name of your Wi-Fi adapter. If you have one, it could be something like W10 or something else. You need to replace this with your Wi-Fi adapter name and then connect. And then with the Wi-Fi network you want to connect to. So in my case, it will be something like EF Tech, for example, 5, which is the name of my network here at home. And once you hit enter there, you will be asked for the passphrase for your network. Once you enter the passphrase, you will be brought back here to the IWD prompt and you can exit by hitting Ctrl D on the keyboard. Now, once you're out, check again your IP by typing again IP space A or IP space dash CA, just to make sure that you have an IP. Now, if you have an IP, we can check if we can synchronize the repositories by typing in pacman dash sy. And you can see we are synchronizing just fine. So that means we can access our repositories. Now, there is one step that I want to mention also this time is to synchronize the network time protocol. To do this, we need to type in time date ctl and then set dash ntp equal to true and then hit enter. And this is also done. So let's clean up the terminal with Ctrl L and type in lsblk to check our disks. Now it's time to format and prepare our disks for the installation. Now in my case, I have a disk there called SDA. This is a virtual machine here. It's 64 gigabytes in space and that's the one I need to partition. So because it's a UFI machine, I will need to use here a GPT label tool, so to say. So I'm going to use GDisk, which is coming already pre-installed in the root ISO. Now to do this, I'm going to type in GDisk slash dev slash sda this is the device path and you can see the disk is brand new so it's creating new gpt entries in memory now i'm ready to create the first partition which is going to be my uh, efi partition that's mandatory on a ufi machine so i'm going to type in n for new and i'll accept the default for the partition number by hitting enter and the same also for the first sector which is going to start the first sector not at the beginning of the disk but slightly after now the last sector defines the size. So for the EFI partition, I'm gonna go with plus 300 megabytes. That should be plenty. Now the code is not actually A300 because that's Linux file system. The code for the EFI partition is EF00. And this is now done. Next, I'm going to create the root partition. So I'm gonna create it again new. Partition number two is fine. The first sector here is also fine. 
And the last sector again defines the size of the root partition. So right now I have 64 gigabytes of space in my disk. So I'm going to create a root partition for, let's say, 30 gigabytes. That should be actually enough. Now the file system is going to be Linux. So A300 is fine. So I'm just going to accept the default here. And now we can create the home partition. So I'm going to hit N again. So partition number three is fine. The first sector is fine and the last sector is going to be also fine because it takes the rest of the disk. And the file system is also A300, so I'm going to hit enter again and this is now done. Now I'm not going to create any swap partition here because later I'm going to create a ZRAM. So now the partitions are there but they are not yet written to the disk. To do this we need to type in W for write and enter. And we need to proceed, so Y and hit enter. And you can see the operation has completed successfully. So if I type in now lsblk, you can see sd1, 2, and 3. So we created now the partitions on our disk. Now we need to format them. So let's begin with sda1, which is our EFI partition. So mkfs for make file system. The file system for the EFI partition is a FAT file system. So vfat is the file system we want. And the device path is slash dev slash sda1 and then hit enter now we're going to format also sda2 and sda3 so let's type in mkfs dot the file system in this video is going to be ext4 i've been using butterfs in the last video and then the device path is slash dev slash sda2 and then hit enter so I'm going to repeat the same process for SDA3 and I don't want to type again everything. So I'm just going to pull up the last command with the up arrow and replace SDA2 with SDA3. And now our partitions are formatted. Now we need to mount them. So LSBLK again, just want to have them in front of me. So we mount first our root partition, which is SDA2. So mount slash dev slash SDA2. And this is going to be mounted under slash mnt because it's our installation directory. Now we need to mount also sda1 and sda3, but we need to create the directories for those partitions. So let's create them by typing in mkdir for make directory, then dash p, and we're going to create them under slash mount because again, this is the directory which is already existing. And I'm going to open the curly brace here. And I want to create two directories. One is the boot directory where the refined bootloader is going to be mounted and also the home directory for my home partition and then hit enter. So now we can mount SDA1 and SDA3 respectively. So let's begin with the EFI partition. So mount slash dev slash SDA1. We're going to mount this partition under slash MNT slash boot and hit enter. And we're going to repeat the same process for SDA3. So mount slash dev slash SDA3 on slash MNT slash home. And then hit enter again. So LSBLK, just to recheck our partitions, you can see there the mount points. SDA1 is on boot, SDA2 is on MNT, which is the, basically the root directory, and SDA3 is on home. So we are ready to install the base packages of our new Arch Linux installation. To do this, we can type in packstrap slash MNT. So we are basically installing the packages in the MNT directory because it's our installation directory where the system is going to be installed. And the packages are going to be the base package, the Linux kernel, in my case, you can install also LTS if you want with Linux-LTS or Linux-Zen if you want. In my case, though, I'm going to install the latest Linux kernel, so Linux is fine. And then I'm going to install also Linux firmware, which, by the way, has been changed since a few weeks. Now, the Linux firmware before was including a lot of firmwares together, but it has been split in several packages. So if you need some specific firmware for specific devices in your machine, you need to check the Arch Wiki and install the appropriate one. Now, the Linux firmware package should be actually enough in most cases, but if not, make sure that you check the Arch Wiki for other packages for other firmwares as well. Now I'm going to install also Git and Vim because I'm going to need them afterwards. If you don't like Vim, you can install also Nano or Emacs, it's up to you. And I'm going to install also Intel-U code because this machine has an Intel processor. If you have an AMD processor, of course, you can install AMD-U code. And that's good for me, so I can just hit enter. 
and this is going to install the base packages. So depending also on your internet connection, this is going to take some time. So I'm going to pause the video here, guys, and I'll be back with you once it's done. So there we go. The packages are now installed. And you can see here we have some warnings about possibly missing firmware. Now, some of these were always there, but we have some others because the Linux firmware package has been split. So we have some firmware which is missing. It doesn't mean that your machine does have these devices, but it's just a warning in case you need firmware for these devices, you will need to check the ArchWiki and install the proper package. Now we install the base packages. Now we need to create the file system table for our mount points. So to do this, we have the gen fstab script, which is already in the ISO, dash capital U, because the file system table is going to be created by using the UUIDs of the partitions, which are unique identifiers. And we're going to take the mount points we have under slash MNT, and we're going to append this information into slash MNT slash etsy slash fstab. Now you might wonder, what the hell are these Etsy FSTAB? Because we didn't create them. Well, we didn't, but when we installed the base packages, they were created automatically. And now we need to put the information of our mount points into the FSTAB file, which is responsible for the mount points of our new installed system when we reboot the machine. And we can check this once we enter the installation. Now that is done, so we can enter our installation by using the arch root command slash mnt. So we are entering the mnt directory, and now we can see all the packages we installed before. So if I type in, in here, for example, lsblk, you can see the mount points there are not anymore slash mnt slash boot and slash mnt slash home, but slash boot and slash home, because we are now in the slash mnt directory. Okay, so now it's time to install the rest of the base system. Now, in this video, I'm going to use again one of my scripts, which is just a collection of commands to install Arch line by line, just in a shell script. It's not a fancy script or anything like that. It's just a script which contains the basics command for installing Arch. Now, in the last two videos, for the last two monthly installation, I went through line by line. If you want to see that, you go ahead and check my previous monthly install. Now, the script is on GitLab, so I need to clone my repository by typing in git clone and then https colon slash slash and then gitlab.com slash eflinux slash arch dash install dash base. Now, this is actually my private repository. If you want to install it with the script, I have a link to my public repository in the video description. So replace arch install base with the name of the repository you find in the description because there you will not be asked for any authentication. So once you're done, we can hit enter here. I need to authenticate because this is a private repository and I need to enter my password. And now my repository is downloading. And if I type in ls, you will see arch install base is the first one on the left. So I need to enter that directory by typing in cd and then arch install base. And if I type in ls l, I see all the scripts I have in here. It's nothing fancy, as I said before. These are just scripts to install Arch, basically line by line, as I do usually on the Arch Wiki. Now, the script I'm interested in right now is the base script, because that's going to install the base system only. So I need to check the script first. So let me type in vim and then base.sh. You can edit this also with your other editor if you installed another one. And this is how it looks like. There's nothing fancy, as I said before. This is just the lines that we have also described in the ArchWiki to install basically our base system. So I'm defining here the time zone, synchronizing the two clocks, creating the locales. You can change this, of course, accordingly to your needs. If you need other locales or you want to choose another host name, whatever you want to do here, you can change. I recommend you definitely to change also the password if you're using this script because this is just a standard password that I'm using here for the video. And these are the packages I'm going to actually install, but I'm going to actually delete in this case the grab bootloader because I'm going to install refine later. So I'm going to delete also the no confirm option. And I'm going to check here if there are other things that I need to install or remove. For example, I see here this time I want to install actually the pulse audio package. And I want to remove actually pipe wire just to show you how you can also change these lines very easily. So here you can scroll through the packages and delete the ones you don't want. In this case, for example, this one as well. And I notice here reflector is installed also twice, which is really not needed. I need to change this in my script. 
And this is all I need to do here. So scrolling down here, you can also install the video drivers. If you have an AMD card or an Nvidia card, you can just uncomment one of these lines. And because I'm using the refined bootloader here, I don't actually need to have these grub lines enabled because I'm not going to install grub anyway. So here I'm going to enable some services which are going to be installed in the packages before. And at the end, I'm going to create a user with my name, give it a password, again, replace this with your password. And I'm going to make the user also part of the libvirt group. If you are installing KVM, this is going to basically make sure that you don't have to enter the password every time you access Virtual Machine Manager if you're using that program. And in the end, I'm going to give also Hermano sudo privileges. And that's all there is to it here. So I can save this file with colon x and I need to give it now uh, execute permissions because if I type in ls-l again, you can see that the base script does not have any access. That means it's not executable. So chmod plus x, that means execute, uh, not execute, but it gives execute permissions to the base script. And if I type in again ls-l, you will see now the base script has an access there. So that means I can execute it. Now to execute it, I go back to the root file system and I'll type in dot slash and then the repository and then the script name and then hit enter. Now it's going to do everything for me. It's going to create the locales. It's going to ask me to select my packages or better said to confirm here my packages. I'm going to accept the defaults here. Now for the portal in this case, because I'm going to actually install Budgie, I'm going to choose the desktop portal GTK, which is the number two and hit enter. IP tables is conflicting with NFT, so I'm going to remove them. And now I proceed with the installation. So again, depending on your computer and on the internet connection, this is going to take some time. So I'm going to pause again the video here, guys, and I'll be back with you once it's done. So the script now finished running and it enabled all the systems and all the things we installed with the packages before. Now the thing which is missing is the bootloader. And that's because we haven't installed it and we haven't executed yet. So we need to install it. To install Refined is very simple. We just need to type in pacman-s and then Refined and then hit enter. And just hit enter here to proceed with the installation. And now it's installed. Now we need to activate it. So we need to actually install it as a bootloader, not only the package. Now, uh, it's fairly simple to install Refine here. We just need to use the Refine install script, which is already coming pre-installed with the package. So we can type in refined-install and then hit enter. And now we need to check just some configurations. You can see there it has created the boot refined underscore Linux dot com file there. So let's explore that file for a second. Let's type in vim slash boot slash refined underscore Linux dot com. And you can see that we have three options. The first two are actually the options for our Arch ISO, which we don't need in our new system because we are not going to boot from there. So I'm just going to delete this. And also the second one, because again, it's for the Arch ISO. And the third one is actually for our new system. You can see we have there two options. One is RO, read only, and the root partition with the UUID. Now here you can add other options if you want. If you want, for example, to have a quiet uh, startup, for example, you can add the quiet option here. In my case, I'm going to add the video uh, equal 2560 per 1440 to make sure that Refine picks up my resolution when it boots up and I boot into the console. And that's basically all there is to it. Now, this is up to you if you want to have the quiet option or not. It's not going to display anything on the screen. But in my case, because I'm not yet finished installing, I want to make sure that I see what's happening when I boot the machine. So I'm going to remove it for now. And then I can save this file and exit Vim. Now, some steps that you need to take before rebooting the machine. The first one is to check the mkinitcpio.com file. So let's type in vim slash etsy slash mkinitcpio.conf and under the modules here i would recommend you to put the driver of your graphic card now if you have an amd card you'll need to put it in here amd gpu if you install the driver i showed you before if you install the intel driver you can also type in, in here i915 the mesa driver which is already coming pre-installed you don't need to actually add it here and if you're using the nvidia card you just add in here nvidia now, once you have done your changes, I don't do this because I don't need, you can save your file in exit vim and you need to regenerate the initramfs 
by typing in here mk init cpio p and then linux and that's because i installed the linux kernel at the beginning you remember if you install the linux lts kernel this is not linux but linux lts or then replace it accordingly then once you hit enter basically the init ram will be recreated with the new driver embedded so you will be sure that you have the driver up and running when you reboot your machine now once this is done you can basically type in exit and you mount dash r on slash mnt to make sure that you unmount all the partitions and now we can reboot our machine by typing just simply reboot it's going to take a moment to do that and you can see here we have our refined bootloader now you can see here we have a boot vm linux linux from efi system partition we have a fallback bootloader here and we have also the arch iso efi because the arch iso is still actually in the system but i'm not going to boot up from there this time now there is a way also to show the arch linux logo here on your main installation to do this we need to change the label of the efi partition so let me boot up the machine i could have done this actually before it's going to take a moment to do this so i'm going to log in here with my username and the password and to change the label of the EFI partition, remember the EFI partition is LS with LSBLK SDA1. So to change the label, you can type in sudo fat label slash dev slash SDA1, and then the label you want to give. Now, in this case, you need to give the name of your distribution. In my case, it's Arch in capital letters. And that's because if you don't, it's going to complain that with lower letters, it's going to have problems. So then you can hit enter here and enter your password and i think i need to type it correctly for it to work <laughs> i'm still having a problem with my password okay so i think now it should work there you go so if we reboot the machine again now we should see actually the bootloader also with the arch logo as you can see here it picks up the logo automatically so I did another video also how you can customize Refine. So if you want to customize it with other themes and stuff like that, you can check that video up. Now, let me enter my password here, the user and the password. And now we are ready to proceed installing the rest of our system. So let me clean up the terminal. And you remember we installed the base system from the script I had. That's still in the root file system. If I type in here ls on the slash on the root file system you will see arch install base is the first one there so i need to copy this into my home directory so to do this i can type in cp r because i want to copy everything in the directory that is recursive and the directory is arch install base i'm going to copy it here in this directory which is my home directory and that's represented with the dot so now if i type in ls you can see arch install base it's in my home directory and if i type in ls l you can see it belongs to me hermano is the first hermano on the left is the user and the second one on the right is the group so it belongs to me and it has the correct permissions now let's go in there cd arch install base and again ls l so you can see the base package the base script actually it's executable it has also colors now, I don't have any budgie script here, so I need to modify one of the scripts I have. And I'm going to do it this way because I wanted to show you also how you can modify the scripts the way you want to, to fit your needs, basically. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to use the GNOME script and I'm going to change it and install the budgie desktop environment. So let me open up the script by typing in vim and then gnome.sh. And here, basically, it's doing some things. So it's creating my mirror list, synchronizing the network time protocol again, synchronizing one more time the repositories, opening the ports in my firewall, and installing also the packages for my desktop environment. Now, because I'm going to install Budgie, I don't want to have the GDM uh, display manager here, so I'm going to remove it. I'm not going to have the GNOME extra packages, but I do keep the GNOME package because it's providing the GNOME shell, which is actually better to have for the budget desktop environment. As you probably know, budget is also based on GNOME and having the GNOME package provides a better experience. Now I'm going to remove here the no confirm option because I want to make sure that I do confirm for the video. And I'm going to install also the budget desktop. 
Now we need also a display manager here because we don't have one. We could use GDM, you can use also another one. In my case, I'm gonna use light DM and the greeter for it is light DM slick greeter, which as you may know, is the greeter for the Linux Mint distribution. And the rest of the packages are basically browsers, uh, themes, and some apps that I use usually in my machine. Nothing fancy here, a lot of fonts. And these two flat packs here, I'm actually not going to install them for this video. So I'm just going to comment these lines so that they are not going to be executed. And I need to change the last line here because it's going to enable the display manager, which is not GDM, it's light DM. And the last two lines here are basically telling me that it's going to reboot the machine automatically. Now, I'm not going to do this for the video, so I'm just going to comment these lines here so they are not going to be executed. And this is all there is to it. So we can just save this file with colon X. And we need to, again, give the script execute permissions because, again, if I type in ls-l, you will see here that the GNOME script does not have any access and it's not green, so it's not executable. So chmod plus X on the GNOME.sh. Now ls-l again, you can see now GNOME is green and it has access, so that means it's executable. Now I'm gonna go back to the home directory here with CD and run it with dot slash arch install base and then GNOME.sh. Now I need to enter my password here. And again, it seems to be I missed my password. So today it's not really my password day here. Let's see if this one is correct. And this one seems to be correct. So now it's basically checking the firewall here, opening the ports and asking me to select my packages. Now I'm going to accept the defaults here. Nothing fancy. And these are all the packages are going to be installed. So I'm just going to hit enter here and proceed with the installation. Now, again, this is going to take some time to install. So one more time, I'm going to pause the video here, guys, and I'll be back with you once it's done. So the packages are now installed. You can see also the symlink for my display manager has been created. Now I need to edit once the LightDM configuration file because I need to tell LightDM to use the slick reader. Otherwise, it's going to look for the GTK reader automatically. So sudo vim slash etsy slash lightdm and then lightdm.conf. And scroll down here with Control F until you find the seed group and check for the greeter session. So we need to uncomment this line by removing the hashtag and replace the line here with light dm slick greeter. So that's all there is to it. So I can basically save this file and exit win with colon X and I can reboot one more time my machine. So let's do this. Here we have our refined bootloader. And let's boot up our machine. If everything went well, we should be greeted by LightDM. And indeed, this is LightDM. Now it's black. It doesn't have any configuration, but that's fine. You can see here we have also the budget desktop environment, which is already selected. And so I just need to enter my password here. And here we are in the budget desktop environment. Now this is not customized. I did videos also for the budget desktop environment. So if you want to customize the budget desktop environment, you can check that video up. But just to show you here how you can do it very quickly with these packages, what I installed, you can go to the budget desktop settings here. You can select the style for the widgets. For example, let's go with arc dark. And for the icons, I'm going to go also with arc. So it's going to change also here. And let's see, for the desktop, it's good. The fonts are also fine. Raven is basically the panel which is appearing here on the uh, right side of the screen. And also the top panel, which can be also changed. So for example, if you go to settings, we can say we want to have it at the bottom. That's also possible. And you can change also other options here. Now, here we have our menu with all our programs installed that I installed during the script. So you can open up, for example, your browser here and we can check, for example, let's say we can check Budgie Arch Linux. And let's select here the first link. This is the Arch Wiki. And you can see again the installation. Now, one thing here, enable the lock screen because the package is not actually installed by default. So what we do here, we open up the terminal. And we can install it very simply by using the sudo pacman-s. And the package name is, as you can see there, budgie-screensaver. And then hit enter. 
enter your password and install the package now it's going to be active once you log out so let me close this window here we can click here on the button and click my name and click log out and you can see also now the uh, display manager picked up my wallpaper so i need to enter my password here again and we are back here in the desktop so we can now click here and click for example lock it's going to lock the screen which looks not really fancy but it does the job so we can enter the password and we are back in the desktop now here we can change of course some things i'm just going to show you this very quickly if you right click on the desktop and go to desktop settings we can go to the panel and let's say for example that we want to have the clock here in the middle so you can see i just click the up arrow here and the clock is now centered you can add also other applets or remove them if you want you can add them from here and the other thing i want to show you for example if we start here the browser let's go to firefox you can always pin here programs on the taskbar by right clicking and clicking the start so when you close the window it's going to be always there for you so this is just a very quick introduction here on the budget desktop environment as i said i have other videos on that on the channel that you can check now if you type in free dash h you can see we are using about 536 megabytes of ram so let's do the last step in this video let me increase the font sizes here you can see better and what i'm talking about is if i type in lsplk you can see we don't have still our zram set up so you remember at the beginning of the video i didn't create any swap partition or anything like that and that's because i want to use the zram which is going to improve the performance of my machine so i'm going to use a package which is in the aur which is called the zram d which is going to create zram using the zstd compression type which is the one i like so i need to download the package now i don't have a helper for the aur in this machine but it doesn't matter i'm just going to clone the repository by typing in git clone https colon slash slash aur.archlinux.org slash zramd and then hit enter now this is going to clone the repository so i need to enter the directory which was just created so cd for change directory zramd and we can build the package by typing in make pkg dash si and hit enter now it's gonna take a moment here i need to authenticate and proceed with the installation now this is written in go so it's gonna install that first and then download and build the package so this is gonna take maybe one minute so i'm gonna pause the video here again guys and i'll be back with you in a moment so the installation was fairly quick and now the zram package the zramd package has been downloaded but it's not yet enabled yet and that's because we need to enable the service so zramd creates actually a systemd service so let me go back to the home directory here and now we can type in sudo system ctl enable dash dash now zramd and hit enter now the service has been activated and started at the same time so if i type in lsplk you can see there we have our zram device of about eight gigabytes so this is all I wanted to show you in this video. We installed Arch Linux with the February 2022 ISO with the refined bootloader, ZRAM and also the budget desktop. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. So this was the monthly installation of Arch using the February 2022 ISO. We installed Arch with the refined bootloader, the budget desktop and ZRAM. I hope you liked the video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you very soon in the next one. Take care, guys.